What's up, YouTube? So I was in here messing around with the step sequencer in the uh, uh, machine software. Never used it before. Ha. Just never used it before. Never even used it on the uh, MPC software, but I always used it with the Redrum and Reason. But uh, while I was working, I got a notification that a uh, new subscriber, I don't want, uh, uh, Ninwa, Nagwa? I think it's something like that. But anyway, uh, I don't want to mess up his name more than I probably already did. But a uh, new subscriber asked me to uh, create a video, if I could, of me uh, mixing or how I would go about the mixing process. And he also asked about the uh, the way that I would sample off of YouTube. So because I've already created a uh, created a sampling video or, you know, using the mixer and the iPhone or the MP3 player and the, uh, the turntable, I didn't really have an idea for a video today. Wasn't even planning on making one today, but when that notification came in, ha ha, the idea presented itself. So what I'm gonna do today, uh, like I said, gonna just, I guess just use these two uh, groups that I have here and uh, wave them out so that I can track them into the Reason software. Yeah, let's go. The Cairo did this. All right, y'all, so we got a basic beat, horns, and drums very basic um and it's ideal for what we're trying to do because like i said we're just trying to get the concept of how i go about mixing inside another dog now here's the thing that i'll share whenever i choose to mix elsewhere i don't send the files over with effects on them because of the fact that i want to utilize the the effects and stuff that are in that dog sometimes you know especially in the process of if you're sending your files over to let's say another engineer or another mixer it's not ideal to send it over with the effects that you chose because that engineer that um mixer may have an idea of their own or may come up with something maybe better than yours or maybe um uh, just more, I, I, I guess, let their vision be their own um, in the process of, of mixing because of the fact that you don't want to kind of, you don't want to set them inside of a box when it comes to mixing your song because of the fact that it, it kind of limits their capabilities based around what you had in mind. And if you're sending it elsewhere to be mixed, then of course, it shouldn't be your idea as to how, how it gets finished. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. But like I said, it's just, that's the way that I go about it, especially because I use one of the members of the music realm for for mixing for me. So, like I said, I'll record the songs, I'll you know um, make the beat, but I send everything over to them uh, raw with nothing on it, so that they can they can have their way with it and and surprise me when they send it back. All right, y'all. So the first thing we want to do is go over to file. We want to export this audio out. We want to make sure here that we select our correct source output and also manipulate any options over here that we choose. I can tell you right off bat, I don't normalize out. And then also I can either choose wave or AIFF as well as if you choose to, I don't mess with this much. I keep it at 44100. But if you want to up it to any one of these, that's up to you. And that's just basically affecting the sample rate. And then you can also affect the bit. All right, and then so let's hop over here. So we got three different options of exporting this out. The first one is master output. What you'll normally use master output for, or let me tell you what I use it for. Let's say I have someone that wants to put a verse on the track with me, but they're not going to mix it. What I'll do is send them a stereo output of the, of the song, and then I'll have them lay their verse and then they'll send it back to me via Dropbox or WeTransfer. And then I'll import it over into my uh, my song. And the good thing about sending it this way is that they'll leave the spacing in, in the front of their vocals. So all you have to do is just lay the track out. And then you'll have that flat line or that sizzle line in the front. But you can cut that out during your editing process. And then you'll have their verse. Or even if um, I also have a, a live bass player that plays on tracks for me. And I'll also use that um that process for them as well but it's not going to be ideal for this because like i said we're trying to mix a song the next one is group output group output is cool if 
you only have two sounds and don't want to manipulate any of the sounds that may be separated. Let's say like in uh, group B, we have separated drum sounds. So we don't have the ability to, let's say, manipulate the, the kick or manipulate the hi-hats or manipulate the uh, snare drum. This limits us. But if, if there's a case where, let's say it's a loop or if the drums are just that dope and you don't want to do anything to it, except maybe if you mix it elsewhere, you want to put a little bit of reverb, this will be cool for you. But like I said, in this case, because we're doing a video where we're showing the breakout, I don't want to do that one. I want to go with the sound options. Sound options are great because it breaks down not only group A, but it also will break down everything that's under group B. So we'll be able to affect the kick, the snare, and the hi-hats um, if we choose. All right, y'all. So let's export this thing out. One other thing that I want to point out is the destination folder. You want to make sure that you send this to a location where you can easily find it. For the sake of this video and so that it's easy to find, let's send it to the desktop. And changing the name is up to you. Um, don't really need to change the name because we already know what it is. But let's go ahead and hit export and let's send it to the desktop. And that's that. So we'll just close that out. Go over to the desktop. It's going to create its own folder. Let's open that folder up and make sure that everything is there. So you got all the, uh, the, you got the horn sounds, the drum sounds, everything in this one folder. So the next thing we want to do is go over to Reason. Open up Reason. Reason always takes a little while to open up, but it is what it is. And so we got Reason open, and so let's start importing the tracks. All right, so now that we're in Reason, what we need to do is import the audio into Reason. So what we're going to do, and also keep in mind, yes, I have my Nectar P1, but for the sake of the video and so that you guys can see what I'm using, I'm not going to use the P1 control. I'm going to do everything using the mouse. So we're going to go and we're going to select our sequencer view. So from the sequencer view, what we're going to do is select desktop. We're going to open up that folder that's on the desktop. We're going to highlight all of these. And we're just going to drag and drop. And so they'll all be imported. Now here's the issue here. Because I didn't set up a full length beat, we're only going to get the one bar that I actually exported out. So that's an issue in itself in the case of me saying that this is a full length beat. However, it's not an issue for the illustration of the video showing you guys how to import. So let's just hit play and make sure that everything plays out. Now also notice that it doesn't extend all the way out to that, uh, end, that end cursor. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to probably skip when it loops back around, back around. So let me cut on loop and let me hit play just to make sure that it's there. Another thing we can do to just make sure that everything is, is imported properly is we can mute the tracks out by themselves. Add another. Add another. And add another. All right, y'all, and that's pretty much it. And if I wanted to upload it into Pro Tools, then I would do the same thing, import it into Pro Tools and track it out the same way. Sorry that the beat wasn't longer, but like I said, I just wanted to do the tutorial for the sake of illustration. Uh, another thing that I want to add is that uh, we transfer Dropbox are good, um, depending on how you want to send your files. I know I use we transfer for the larger files. Um, and like I said, that's only in cases that I want to send the stuff out to be mixed by my buddy. If I want to do it myself, everything's in reason, ready to go. And then I'll start mixing from there using the effects. Uh, and then also because I'm on reason 9.5, I can use plugins in reason now too. I'm not going to update to, uh, update to reason 10 just yet. Um, haven't found a reason to do it just yet. Um, especially because I'm already on a new type of, uh, 
hardware here. I kind of want to kind of balance out what I'm doing all at once. So got to got to spend my money right. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, it's not about me flossing or doing too much. It's about me just kind of staying in the loop of what's going on. And for the sake of me being able to provide uh, videos, because now I'm learning this, I already know that, I know that, and then I know that. So it's kind of like the conversation keeps going as to far as what I'm using in my workflow. But once again, I am the Cairo plug in, get connected. We are TMR. Oh, hold on. I want to say once again that I appreciate you viewers. I appreciate you subscribers. I appreciate the time that you give me when I put out these videos. The Cairo did this.